the night fell down and morning came, the next morning I was crying. I mean, I, I couldn't understand what happened, but now I see the man did his job. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that he was tired, and he was tired of the real rap and stuff and stuff, and he only left. But now, we have to realize that we all are a mountain to something. We do do good things in life and please other people and do things like that. So, pray for him, and let's, let's all just stick together as one. Hello, I'm John David, director of the Southern Appalachian Labor School. I've come here on behalf of the staff and the board and our late chair, Ellen M. Powell, to say a few words about Pete, who came to see me one day a way long time ago when he came back from Ohio. We had just gotten an AmeriCorps grant. Putting on AmeriCorps folks, and he was interested in being an AmeriCorps member. And I'm proud to say that he became one of our first AmeriCorps members for the SALS program. He said, I'm a poet, and I'm scratching my head trying to figure out here how to do putting him on the AmeriCorps program. And so we talked back and forth and back and forth, and we finally decided that he was going to become our cultural worker. And he became the sound cultural worker. And that's how he got involved with our programs in Beers Fork, and that's how he got involved with the programs with Ms. Penny and Ms. Anderson in London at the Community Center. And on he went from there, and he has been a real, real supporter of our programs ever since, including all of our partners. Events and the various programs and persons he represented when he worked for the Andy program uh, that, he, that he know about. So I'm here today on behalf of the board and staff to present Priscilla. And I want to present a handcrafted one that has cells very His cup runs over, and we want you to have his cup, his mug, every morning, tea, coffee, whatever. And remember the relationship that we've had between the Southern Appalachian Labor School, Pete, and of course you. Pastor Alfred Martin, right over the office in the I bring greetings in your life. I'm reading y'all today the resolution of Northern Georgia. Be a revolve that the surpassing of our brother, Northern Georgia, right over the office number nine, has lost his memory to the failure, anger, and law to, to the end of his case. He has been called for his earthly labor. Heavenly rewards by the grand architect of the universe. Be it resolved that we, his brothers, commend his soul to God. For his will, doing faithful brothers who have crossed the bar, and then on the final resurrection day, when all good and loyal brothers are joined, we will be again. Be it resolved that we extend to the family and friends our heartfelt sympathy. In sorrow and trouble, this Christian world, there is just one place that we may go. One place where a pair of stars fit. And heavenly heart finds sweet beauty. So put your problems in God's hand. He will always hear it and understand. Be it resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family in a copy place on cloud in Life Hope Lodge, number nine, archives. Done by the order of Life Hope Lodge, number nine. Free and set lady, November, West Virginia, July 11, 2015. Washington Master, William Russell, 
Secretary Pass Master Robin K. Al Cox. Director for the African American Arts and Heritage Academy. On behalf of the Academy, I would like for all of the faculty members, staff, volunteers, and former students, instructors, to all stand. Norman has left us with a legacy. A legacy in which we will continue to follow. My daughter did sing the impossible dream. Norman had that dream. He followed and he traveled to reach that star. No matter how hopeless, no matter how far. On behalf of the Academy, we will reach that star. We will continue to move forward. As Norman would always say, I don't know how we're going to make it, but we're going to do it. And over these years that I've been affiliated with the camp, and that has been 13 years in a volunteer capacity, now just recently elected, maybe three years ago as the director, we are continuing to move forward and continuing to encourage young people to always strive to be the best they can be in this United States of America. And with that said, may God bless the family. We love you so much. May God continue to keep you all in this care as we move forward, upward and onward. And may God bless you all. man in the mid-90s when I moved back here to West Virginia, and we both joined AmeriCorps in the South. Over the years, he became an important part of the job I have had in West Virginia. At the Beard Sport School, we painted, sorted through the many items left there, and in the evening during our last 15 minutes, as instructed by our supervisor, Vicki Smith, washed the paints out of our brushes, and chatted. Norman had the ability to smile and find a way to just laugh at various situations. Once the building was usable, we started a summer educational and fun program for the local kids and named it Prime Time. We had educational classes, various speakers, a bicycle parade, street cleanup. We even took gifts to the Market Fest in Charleston and had a newspaper recycling box in the corner. Now, I had no clue as to what to do with them. I just knew that was something you were supposed to do. <laughs> Later, Norman mentioned to me a job was available similar to what I was doing, and he thought I was qualified. The closing was soon, but I was totally unaware of it. He said, now you've got all those newspapers over there in the corner. The ad must be in one of them. <laughs> I applied and got the job as the Fayette County Starting Points Coordinator, one of seven in the state. At one of the Dubois High School reunions, I overheard one man say he had been a Tuskegee Airman. That prompted me to talk to reunion attendants about what they had done after high school. You see, at high school reunions, we tend to talk about high school days, just reminisce. From the 1953 graduating class of 52 students, I have learned that there are three students with doctorate degrees. One high-ranking retired female military member who was the first to achieve her status and many other interesting career paths including square dance champion. <laughs> <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> I will hope to continue that effort. I needed and got Norman's advice on how to do this. Later, as historian of the Dubois Reunion Committee, my collection of history of the Dubois students was growing in size and interest. I 
continued learning from Norman through visits to the museum and many conversations. When I had the opportunity to purchase a building in Mount Hope, I knew it was to be a museum for displaying the collection of viewpoint history that was being stored in closets and containers in my house. Norman gave me advice on how to set up a museum and the various resources I would need. <coughs> and Brucella were there for the opening in August 2012. They're members of the Dubois on Main Museum. Yes, Norman Jordan had a big impact on what I am now doing. He will be missed terribly. That's where I met Keith back in 1982. We were both students there at the time. And we developed a relationship over the years. Uh, with Keith was basically my own brother. And I just wanted to say that I love Keith and I love the whole Jordan family. And Lucas, so, and, and thank you very much for making this part of your family. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Joseph, uh, Joseph Bundy, from Brookville, West Virginia. And uh, I think I, I met Norman around 1986. And he was at the Camp Washington College. And we became friends. And uh, after he found out I had a theater background, asked me to join the faculty on the camp, and our friendship just grew uh, from there. And we worked with uh, many projects together. He was a great help for me. And you know, in your lifetime, uh, those people who help you, you kind of hope that someday maybe I hope I can give something back uh, to them. And I started being uh, what you call a history of life scholar or uh, uh, a Chautauqua scholar. And that's where you take on the character of, of a historical person and give first person monologues uh, to teach history. And I was doing the characters of, of, of James Rowland Johnson and later Booker T. Washington. And I was able to give something back to Norman and Brousseau. And I trained them to be Chautauqua scholar, and Norman became uh, uh, Carter G. Woodson. And uh, Brousseau became out of the well. And so uh, I, was, I was happy to be here. And we had you know, been together and worked together a while ago, but I just uh, one thing I, I want to say, uh, Norman and Ed Cavill and myself and Sh uh, uh, Milner, what's Sharana? Sharana. Sharana. No, let me go. John. We were in the, uh, this book. Uh, uh, Norman and they had formed this poetry group, and they had all been published. And I didn't uh, poetry, but hadn't gotten published yet. But then uh, uh, they came out with this West Virginia uh, poetry book, and Norman and Ed Cowell and I, you know, we, we all got uh, uh, into it, and we were all very proud of that. And we recited our poems for the kids at the Arts Academy. And uh, one poem I had in the book was called Contradiction. And Norman, and it's like you dealt with that contradiction. And the, the form went like this. How could we reason that Robert E. Lee's treason was somehow patriotic? Yet John Brown's decree that all people should be free somehow made him neurotic. <laughs> Norman truly dealt with those contradictions. The contradiction of, of what was right 
and the contradiction of the way things work. And he worked all of his life to make things the way they should be. And the, my favorite refrain uh, from Lord was from his poem where he said, hometown boy, <laughs> go back from where you came. <laughs> because I haven't seen my baby since you got off that train. <laughs> Lord came back to West Virginia because he was a blessing to this state. They're huge. And I looked at them and watched them. And I couldn't really like Uncle Mike and Uncle Brock. He held them apart. They looked so much alike to me. And so I was looking at you. I just watched them trying to figure out you know, what was going on. And I remember one time my Uncle Brock fell on the floor. I think he was strong. <laughs> under the table, he fell on the floor, and I'm looking at him, and I'm like trying to figure out, is this, you know, does this happen? What's going on? But, um, and I've always been under these lines, and they were talking, I was listening to the things that they were saying, and so they were talking about um, Uncle Pete, because he lived somewhere else, he were in Cleveland, and he was coming in, and he was out in the world, and he was doing stuff, and they were talking about him. Oh my God, his hair! What's he doing with his hair? Can you leave it on? <laughs> and the hair was a big deal. And then at one point, it changed his name to Jesus. And my grandma said, like, "Peter Jesus, Peter Jesus, what is that?" <laughs> <laughs> um, my grandfather was like that. 